over my first 100 days, what we've been trying to do is to start to change course and illustrate some different things are possible. Uh, sort of success and reform takes a lot longer than that, but you have to start the journey somewhere. In terms of our people, there's two sides to that. There's the setting up our majority of people to succeed. There are too many ways there not set up properly with the right equipment and the right tools. And for example, we've been rolling out mobile phones for everyone, which is long overdue. So setting up the, the good offices to succeed is critical, as is taking on those who have um, undermined the trust of the public through um, their corrupting behavior. They have corrupted our integrity with racism, misogyny, and uh, other toxic conduct, and um, we're going after them. But I think there's also something about how we look at the crime problems that policing is, policing is wrestling with. I've been really clear that um, we have some officers in the, in the service who are racist, who we need to sort out, and we don't get everything right. I've been really candid about that. Um, but I think it would be helpful if in the conversations we have in fora like this, we also look at how crime falls very unevenly on London. Um, we, I very rarely get questions publicly about why is it that young black men are 12 times more likely to be murdered in London over the last decade than young white men. So we're always focusing on the police use of powers. And I'm absolutely clear we haven't always got that right. So I'm not trying to be defensive about it. But if we're to tackle the fact that black communities have the lowest trust, but also the highest victimization, we need to be prepared to talk about, the, talk about these issues in the round.